Hey, y'all. Welcome to Harps Court, another episode of Harps Court. And the beauty of podcasts, in my opinion, is that it gives you a platform that you can go in a lot of different directions. So I'm going to bring in a different player. I know you guys are accustomed to me talking to NBA stars, coaches, whatever the case may be. But I thought I'd go in a different direction for this podcast and bring on, like I said, a different kind of a player, uh, Dwayne Price. Dwayne, I'm sorry, Dwayne Bishop. We know Dwayne Price, right? But in any event, man, I, I, welcome to the show. Good to be here, Hart, always, and uh, glad to help out. You know, I, I, I want to talk about what you do. You're in the security business on a professional level, both in the NFL and the NBA, but you work very close with the Cowboys. You work very close with the Dallas Mavericks. And I think a lot of people would be curious, Dwayne, if you would, to know how you got into this business because it has certainly turned into a huge business. Sure. So uh, I guess a lot of times when people go to games, they don't realize like an like NBA game, there are three layers of security at, the, at those games. You have the arena security people who basically that's how they work all the events that goes on at the arena. But then you have the actual league security person, which is with the NBA, the NFL, the hockey league. They have their own representative. And then, of course, you have the team, the team security people. And so all three components and all three levels has to work together on a given game. And so for me, you know, I've been working with, I was with the league since probably about 02. Mm. Uh, yeah, in 2002 is when I, it's sometime around that time, but I was with the league at that point. But it wasn't until um, I think uh, when we won the, the year after our uh, after we won a championship, that's when I moved over to the team side. So it's been over a good uh, twenty years that I've been working with the league and with the team uh, uh, in, in total. For the for the Cowboys, I've done a lot of things with the players and with the owners, but I haven't really. Uh, now I'm working with the league. Okay. Because so when you look at it, you know, the league is what is what set the parameters and then everybody else has to follow. Hmm. So I'm, I'm curious as to what, what do you think the biggest challenge is as far as working with the guys, working with the people that you work with? I hope you don't mind me naming a few people that I know you work with, Dirk Nowitzki, Luca, Mark Cuban, Ross Perot Jr. What do you think the biggest challenge to working with all of these high profile people is as far as security is concerned? Sure. It's I, I can tell you exactly. It's just getting to know who they are and their personalities. Trust. You know, everybody has a different way of doing things. Dirk has a, a lot of uh, does things differently than Luca, right. than JJ, or than, than a Dorian Finney Smith. So you you gotta understand what their character and what they like, what they like and what they don't like. And so like I used to tell everyone, you know, I like I like telling made suits. You know, so <laughs> me it, it too. Fits, you know, I like the way they fit, you know. And right, so right. <laughs> you know, so you when you can tell a made security to that individual, you know, it won't, you know, my suit won't fit you, Derek, but if it's good on me and it hangs good on me, <laughs> right, so right. It, but it's made just for me. So when you get a guy that's in my profession, you got to get that guy that can actually make that suit that's going to be, you know, that he's going to like and it's going to make him feel good about it. Is there a difference in covering the NFL opposed to the NBA? So so the, I just, this is my second year with the, with the league in the NFL. NFL, yeah. And one of the reasons why I wanted, you know, this is – like the third time it was actually offered to me to be one of the reps for the NFL and not basically turn it down because it was so much, I was doing so much, I own my own company and everything. And then I was traveling a lot with the Mavericks. And so at that point, you know, but I, but I did recognize that the, the league, like the NFL is what set the, set the standards. Mm -hmm. So normally when something happened, you know, you look at, you know, uh, best practices, then this usually comes from the NFL. And then the NFL turns it over to the NBA or to baseball. And then by that time, it gets down to the teams and then the arenas. 
So what I wanted to do was let me learn what the NFL does because I, on a given game day, man, the, the NBA has like a booklet of things that you got to know on no, uh, uh, on a given game. Mm-hmm. The, the NFL has some like two books of, of things to be done. Right. So it's really, really, it really, really gets complicated when you start talking about, you know, the NBA uh, or the NFL. And so that's why I'm learning now, you know, the parameters of the NFL. And then I can take that same energy and then I can put it with the NBA. You know, I, I played in Dallas, got traded to New York, and I, I'll equate it to this, to media. The coverage in Dallas compared to what it was in New York was yes. night and day. I mean, there were tons more media members there to do interviews and things of that nature. You talked about 211 when the Mavericks won the championship. How did the media, the scope of it, change once the Mavericks got in the championship, and what was that experience like in 2011? Wow, man, you know, that was, man, I was like, all the work you've done for so many years, <laughs> mm-hmm. then all of a sudden it comes to, you found a, actually, you know, work a championship game for your home team. I had worked championship games before, you know, but in different arenas for different teams. And so the league would pull some of their best reps and put them over, okay, we got a championship game going on, you know, in L.A. And so they would take some people from Dallas, from New York, from Chicago, you know, some some of the places where have had championship, you know, experience. And even though I was, a, you know, I had never worked a, um, a championship game, but they would take some of the best reps and then they would put them on, on different assignments. So when we won and then you're at home, then everything falls up on, on your shoulders at that point because now it puts Dallas – on the map, and you got all these different media in, uh, outlets coming in from all over the United States and all over the world. And so it's even, even it, only thing I know that might even be close to that was like All Star when we did the All Star game mm-hmm. here in Dallas. And that's the only thing that, that basically comes close to it. How many All Star games have you done? Do you remember? Oh, man. I, I can tell you one. I, I, when, if I started in 02, yeah. I did every. I started in 04. I remember the the very first All-Star I worked was in L.A., and I want to say that should have been like 04. It's either 03 or 04. It was, that was the very first one. And then I worked all the way. I worked every All-Star until we won a championship, and so to, to 2010, 2011. Right, can you talk about, and I, I know there are certain things that you, you're going to share with, with our viewers and certain things you're not, but if you would talk, you know, I think people from afar, they look at professional athletes, owners, general managers, whatever stars in general, they look at those in those kind of individuals like they're UFOs, right? Like they're untouchable. Could you touch on how normal celebrity quote unquote superstars are in general to work around and be around? Because they're not, Luca is goofy in a lot of ways. Dirk has this little quirks about himself that people don't know, but these guys are normal, wouldn't you say? So, so <laughs> remember, remember, man, I worked on the police department for 24 years and I was assigned to dignitary protection 20 of those 24 years. Wow. And, and so most of my assignments was for presidents, vice presidents, ambassadors, heads mm-hmm. of states. You know, people who are making decisions in the world. Yes. And so for the most part, you know, I I was doing security for people who actually made decisions in the world. Mm. And so when it comes down to athletes, it was not anything spectacular for me because these guys, you know, they're playing a game. And even though the game impacts, you know, it impacts a lot of individuals, I was a, just basically been accustomed to the people who were actually, you know, make the decisions. And so it was, it's nothing for me to work a Luca or, or a, um, or Dirk Nowinski or, you know, I, I even worked uh, on Ross Perot and I started, I guess, with Ross Perot uh, on his presidential detail because he, he refused to have secret service. And so I actually was on his uh, presidential security team. So listen, where, where do you think, 
security goes from here? Do some teams and some organization organizations have more than others, or it's kind of hit or miss on how much security? Yeah, so every team different different so from from others and it depends on their budget and then the caliber of player that they have. Yes. You know, so when you look at, you know, let's say, you know, like a New Orleans team or or um, you know, even with a Cleveland team, that budget may not be the market's a little bit smaller. And so they may not have, you know, uh, as much in their in their budget for security, but I guarantee you, if they got a, a top player like Zion, he's going to have his own security, and they're going to they're going to it's going to be dependent upon you know their security director or their VP of security, and that's going to dictate what what size the uh, security team is going to be per per uh, per each city. So Luca is somewhat of a rock star, Dirk Nowitzki, because they're international. So to right. speak, right? So they 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 uh, they get a lot of attention overseas in the NBA. What what's the difference in say a guy like Luka Luka Doncic, a guy like Kawhi Leonard, just just the big names, Steph Curry? What is their how is their security different from the other guys that are in the league? It's really not going to be any difference. The only the only difference you're going to see is. Some guys use um, like friends of the family, mm. you know, when, in the off season, where you'll have other guys who basically use more professional people with the, with the team or with law enforcement or, or uh, some kind of um, secret service background. And so, and so, but for the most part, you know, they are going to have a caliber of person that's going to be around them that can that can basically you know handle whatever situation comes up. Because those guys, they've been you know, a lot of them when they come to this to that platform of being superstars, mm -hmm. they're not used to having security as well. And so that's what I mean about telling making security to them. And you understand their personality and their needs, and then the threat level that's placed upon them. And then that's how you can decide on what type of security and what type of security person you should have around them. Did you envision? Security, you know, you started off as a police officer here in the uh, Metroplex. Did you envision security being as needed and uh, uh, did you envision it being a necessity almost the way it has become for you? I started in police work and I knew as long, you know, I knew I had job security as long as I was a police officer. Mm -hmm. I never envisioned doing security at this level that I'm doing it right now. You know, I come from a small town, Derek, in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, I know very well. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, I, I I came up, my goal was to, to join the Birmingham Police Department and and make a difference, you know, in the city of Birmingham. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up, I, I came up in the 60s. And so to, but I, I remember one of my college professors telling me, you know, get the experience. You can always come back here to Birmingham. Go to Chicago or New York or L.A., you know, or Dallas. And so when Dallas came recruiting on this, on our college campus, he referred me and got me uh, an interview. And that's how I actually made made it here to Dallas. So it's, you, you know, it was, a, it, but it was just a 20-year plan for me. I said 20 years and I'm out. I didn't want to be one of these older guys that stayed on the police department, couldn't <laughs> hold a walk, couldn't run. And then... Um, and, you know, and then say, you know, driving, riding around the police car. No, I, I said right alone, I'm going to work my butt off as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm I'm actually going to uh, retire and do my own thing. Okay. I, we we do a uh, segment called Fact or Fiction on the, a segment on Harp's Court. Fact or Fiction. The Dallas Cowboys win the championship this year, <laughs> and you can't and you can't lie with your ass. Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> to what degree is that fiction in your opinion? Well, you know what I always say: uh, you got to make it to the playoffs before you can make it to a championship game, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm a converted Cowboy fan this morning. 
So you I put just me in a bad spot. I want you to know that. I wanted to. That's what I'm I did. To the Cowboys, <laughs> but you asked me to a here. No, I'm not. A, I, I'm not a fan. I'm not. I'm not a fanatic. But I, I, I can keep it real. Yeah, you live. You live here, so you got to support him. So somewhat. <laughs> But because of all of this technical difficulty, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. I know you have a busy schedule today, and just know how much I appreciate you coming on, man. We'll talk a little bit later. Harvard's always good, man, to be on here. You know, like I said, for anybody who wants to get involved with security, it's a great career. Uh, but you know, you can learn a lot, and so for all the guys that's out there, you know, looking at what we do in security, I just want to make sure they understand. You got to understand what we did. Yes. And so- it was a struggle getting to where, we, where I am right now. And it wasn't easy. And everybody can't do this right here. But but I'm willing to, you know, I, I got people who mentored me and I also mentor others as well. And so it's 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 not easy. But um, but right now, I think, you know, my company and what we're doing, we're going in the right direction. And I got the NBA and the NFL to uh, guidelines that kind of show me the way and they do all the legwork. And I just I'm just following the script. So it's it's been a great career for me. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Thanks so much for uh, jumping on Harp's Court. Appreciate it. All right, man. All right. All right. Talk to you. All right.